COVID Care is a non-profit organization seeking to bring hope, light, and relief to families and citizens around Trinidad and Tobago who are affected by the current pandemic. So much so that they have turned the word COVID into an acronym meaning for comforting one another voluntarily, intentionally, devotedly. PRO Jalen Lynch joins us to tell us more about their many relief efforts at this time. Thank you so much for joining us, Jalen. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's a great pleasure. And we start off by asking for an overview of COVID care, please. Well, basically, what has happened is that since we have had the COVID-19 pandemic, and more so when the lockdown came in place, a few of us, more so professionals and friends, young professionals and friends, we decided to come together because we understood that with the pandemic and with a lockdown happening in the country, that there would be some sort of a gap in the social network. So there will be persons that are unemployed, persons that are basically, you know, shortcomings in terms of um, meeting rules, free and financial needs. So what happened is that we came together as a team and we were like, you know what, let's pool our resources. Let's take the first step instead of waiting to hear the cries of persons. Let's take that step forward and, and try to find out if persons have been affected by this and let's go out. And you know, the first, when we, we did that and we went out there on the field, we were overwhelmed by what we were seeing because we were actually shocked that there were two families affected too adversely, adversely actually, from what has been happening with the pandemic, you know, through employment and stuff. And when we went out there the first time, we gave out hampers, food hampers, and stuff, and clothing to kids and stuff. And the, the feedback that we received, it was so overwhelming. and. Um, it actually inspired us to, to, to get to where we are right now, at right now, and that is forming our own NGO, we call it COVID Care. You know, we're looking at basically sort of redirecting the narrative. I mean, COVID is what it is, but we're trying to bring some sort of care, hope, and light to a narrative that is kind of plaguing the nation, plaguing the country, plaguing society. Right now, are we trying to reach out as best as we could to persons that are in? And I want you to tell me a little more about this team, please, on the team members, because sometimes when you see other people's houses on fire, you decide to wet yours, as opposed to pooling your resources and saying, okay, we need to be our brothers or sisters keepers. Who's involved in the team? Well, we have uh, a few persons, just like about probably eight to ten of us. But I must say that um, since we started to go out there and start a Facebook page and stuff, we've had an overwhelming amount of support. Persons willing to to come forward and, and be part of the initiative. So, I mean, our core team consists of, you know, both male and female. We have Natasha Norega. She is actually one of the, the key persons that helped to develop this initiative. We have myself as the PRO. We have other persons, Rogs and Philly, and, and, and different persons that have come together, about, about eight of us. And we've carefully, you know, put this planning process together. You know, I'm a caterer by profession, so, when the pandemic hit us, um, I mean, of course, and the lockdown came thereafter, businesses were closed. I mean, for me, my sector was totally, it came to shut as a theater. So, I mean, I had a, a, had different stuff that I could have used and put together instead of staying there and becoming expired. And, you know, just as what I did in my initiative, other persons did as well, and we came together, pulled our resources, and, you know, that's how we make we made our step, step forward. And pooling resources, I appreciate that. And I also am asking about the move from just saying a group of core members to actually having an NGO. Because, and, and I'm looking at you and seeing some of the, one of the uniforms that you all are looking very uh, impressive and, and, and formalizing it. So what was the thought yes. to saying, okay, well, this is something that we need to do on a manner that is this formal? Well, as I said, when we went out there and when the key that we got, He's like, you know what, we need to formalize this thing, we need to come together and make this thing, um, you know, give it this sort of a framework moving forward. So, of course, the uniforms are one part, and we did jerseys. Actually, what we are doing right now as well, we started to do some masks, some um, COVID care themed masks. So, our name is COVID care. We have them in pink, and we have them in blue, we have them in white. I mean, I don't have all of the colors here. But these are part of our uniform, yes, but it's also a part of a, um, a drive in terms of purchasing and donations and proceeds to go towards the campus and packaging for families that are in need. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, we're moving forward. We are in the intent to develop our membership, being 
based on two issues that are speaking in this and stuff. But you know, right now we the focus is that resource. You know, families are out there in need. One thing that this thing has shown us is that we have went out there and seen some persons that are in dire need. You know, we've seen some hungry families. It has humbled us. You know, we went to the tip of mountains, and I'm not just saying that for saying sake. We literally went to some families that live high up on the hills. Nothing has stopped us. And we've met families that, that really, really are reaching out and would like the help and assistance. So anything that we get, you know, any anything that we can do together as a team, we are making it possible. And we're seeing and we're seeing that caterers touching how those meals are looking. But give me a little idea of some of the places that you've already touched because you talk about going to mountains. What 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 are some of the previous distribution areas? Well, from most recently, we went to the center for the street persons in San Fernando. I believe that is on the Hills Avenue. That was really nice because I'm a caterer. So um, what I would have done is that I would have prepared, have prepared meals. You know, everybody would have been good stuff. We did burgers and we did fries. We did um, vegetables, we did cool so and these kind of stuff. So we prepared some nice meals, and I'm sure you guys have some pictures to display of that. And we took it down to the homeless shelter and. We distributed it to them, and you know they were really warmed by it because one, I believe, the shelter is open to any persons that are, 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 are basically don't have um, a living environment to come in if any problems or issues. And you know when we took the meals down to them, they were so you know they were happy to see what we would have done. And that is just one. We did Lady Hills with the um that shelter, and we would have done many families. We would have gone far and wide. We went to South. We went to. As far as um, Sandy Grande, we went to Arima, we went to Maracas Valley, and we've been down to the West. So we have been more to targeting families. And we have been asking persons, um, do you know families that are in need? And persons have been reaching out to us. And, you know, we, we go, we, we move like a motorcade. Sometimes there's five, six cars. Because we, we ensure that the hampers that we give are substantial. So, for instance, you know, we do usual grocery items. We do, like, cases of water. We do in case families have kids. We would do like snacks, packs, and um, chubby soft drinks, juices, and stuff. And you know, so sometimes when we go down there, we go down there with a team. Of course, observing all levels of, of, of COVID 19 protocols. And we really do reach out to them and invest way forward. But we have visited a lot of families. Now, you, said that, the, you, said, you said that the response has been overwhelming. What do people say when they see your relative age? Well, that is young people. When, when they see what we have done, the first thing, of course, we have persons that are in dire need and are reaching out to our system. So we, it, it goes two ways. We have persons that are reaching out to us because they want help. And then, of course, we have persons that are reaching out to us because they want to help. And, you know, it, 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 it's a great balance because, you know, what, resources are important, but, you know, getting persons to help to execute the tasks and to go out there, to meet families, engage families is important. But, you know, right now we are facing a time where we actually have more persons reaching out to us in need of help than persons that are willing to help. So we are making basically just a, 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 a call to the corporate sector or any persons that are interested in assisting us that they can reach out to us and see what can be done. Because it is more than we think it is. There are persons that are in need and, and that are looking for some sort of upliftment here in this sector. All right, so just on the other side of this break, when we return, we're going to talk about how people can contact you, how people can lend assistance, how people can offer aid. Stay with us. We're speaking of, with Jaylon Lynch of COVID Care. We return after this. Welcome back. We are speaking with Jaylon Lynch, PRO of COVID Care, about the work that the NGO is doing at this point in time during the pandemic. Now, Jalen, I want you to give us contact information. Let us know how people can help, how people can assist. So, the floor is yours. Well, you can reach out to us firstly. You know, we are on social media platforms. We are on Facebook right now. You can look for the name COVID here. And you can reach out to us on cell phone via WhatsApp or a phone call at 721-7783. That's 721-7783. And then we have 355-2505. So you can reach out to us at those numbers and let us know what your concerns are, if you'd be willing to assist us, or if you know persons that are in need 
we are trying our very best, you know, to, to entertain as much as, as we can. You know, physically, with, in terms of developing our membership base, it's a, it, it's a bit tough right now because, you know, we would love, we have so many persons interested. We would love to meet with you and to share ideas and stuff. But given all that is going on, you know, we are using our virtual platforms right now. So you can reach out to us and we can see what we can do in terms of our best people. And who are, this, who are some of the individuals that you're working with already? Are there individuals, groups, um, service providers who have reached out to you, have helped already, and you'd want to say thank you at this point in time? Yeah, most definitely. We have um, different organizations. We have Saver City Caterers. We have Google Group. We have Swat Estate Police. We have Phenomenal Studios and Events. Those are just a few. But in terms, I mean, the corporate support is coming in, it's trickling. I know that it's hard for everyone. It's a pandemic. The financial burden has hit everyone. Private sector, public sector. So in terms of corporate support, it's a bit tough. But what has surprised us is the amount of individual personal support that we have been getting. Persons have been reaching out to us, coming and dropping more um, grocery items. Persons have been doing monetary donations. These masks that we were able to do is because someone saw them what we were doing and they donated um, cash towards, and I would like to thank Ms. Simone Peters, she would have donated cash towards making this initiative something. This is actually our first cash donation. And the first thing that we did is to make these masks, of course, a local tailor and printer would have partnered with us to ensure that it was done at a reasonable cost. And what we intend to do is we intend to sell these items. And of course, all proceeds would go towards you know, all of the initiatives that we would like to do to help persons affected by this pandemic. So that's just to name a few. I mean, as I said, we have corporate support, but most importantly, the, the amount of um, persons, citizens, um, concerned citizens that have been reaching out to us has been helpful. And we encourage persons, you know, it could be as little as you can, as much as you could. Um, but anything that you can do would definitely assist a family or family can help. And I just want to make reference to one situation. You know, there, has, there was a particular person that worked, one of our co-workers, she was just noticing some change in his pattern. She would realize that he would come to work and, you know, she wouldn't see him having a meal and stuff like that. And, you know, while she didn't have the courage to go up to him to actually find out, she would ask him, of course, you know, is everything okay, everything fine? He would have respond yes. And, you know, she saw our group and she reached out to us, you know, this is someone that I think you guys could probably reach out to and see if he's in. And we did. We reached out to that person. He's a single father of two. And we provided a hamper to him. And, you know, after we provided that hamper, he reached out to the group and he was so thankful because he said that he was really going through some trying times because of the experiences he had with the pandemic. And we were really grateful to know that they, we could reach out and impact persons in that way because there was this, this, I mean, it's a guy that probably didn't have food to eat on his table. And, you know, he was really feeling the brunt of it. And it was so similar to reach out to him. And there are lots of families. There's a family that reached out to us in Super Sandy Brandy, a disabled mother, and she has kids, and, and she are, you know, below the, 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 the income line and stuff. So we are really trying to reach out as much as we can. And this kind of reminds me of the parable of the five loaves and the two fish in the sense that everybody digging into their pocket a little bit can help make that meal definitely. go a long, a longer way. Every little thing can definitely help. As I said, persons are bringing a few tonight. Some persons are bringing kilos of bread. Persons are bringing market Because we do everything. So when we send a hamper to our family, we try to make sure it's substantial as possible. We try to make sure it can do what they need. We keep it for the kids, keep it for the adults, and everything. So we do try our very best. And anything that anybody's willing to, to send our way, we make up some very nice packages and mini features. Because so we go into it with so much deal. And I think the inspiration stems from that one time. Because we did this so informally, quote unquote. We just decided that day when we was like, you know, guys, let's, let's come together. Let's just let's do what we can do and probably reach out to some person. And when what we saw, it really, really moved us to um, do what we are doing right now. And we do it with such great deal and passion. Because it really is reaching persons and it really is helping that's important and one of the things that i appreciate is the fact that you're trying to be as circumspect as possible uh you had that colleague or that co-worker of that that father of two calling you all and asking you all to check and see whether or not that person might need help 
And even now, the way that yeah. we're speaking, we're not calling names. Uh, There's some of the um, images and the photographs that we would have discussed before. And the idea was not to get a shot of individuals' faces unless they're a member of the team, the core, the core team, the members. And that reminds me to ask the question. People are talking about this new normal, which is not normal at all. But at the same time, trying to keep a face that you have children, you're trying to keep some sense of normalcy. There are many birthdays that have passed, and people have not been able to celebrate them in the way that they would. But there is one family that you all would have helped with that. So talk to me about that party. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and this is where we spoke about, you know, going everywhere the group can take us. I mean, we are not limited. I do remember that particular situation where someone would have reached out to us here. This family need a mother, I believe she has four kids. And they are living way up in Maracas Valley, the hills of Maracas, a very rural community. And you know, some of the members of the group, we all go with our own vehicles because we use our trunk space to store different items, pieces of water, pieces of chubby, the, the grocery items, the market items. So we go with like a mini motor case. So, you know, some of the female members are like, hey, I cannot drive up any hill. I'm like, listen, I live on a hill. I will lead in front and you will follow behind and I'll guide you guys. And we, we, we went up there because we wanted to reach out to this family that someone told us about. And listen, when we got up there, we were, so taken. Our hearts were so warmed by the conditions that we saw that family living in. It was literally a one room shack and they were collecting water through a trout from their roof. And you know, we were really humbled by their circumstances. And when we went there just to give a package, a hamper, we were like, you know what? We need to adopt this family. We walked out of there about twelve of us. And we were walking back to our vehicles after we did our distribution. And we were all feeling the same way deep down within our soul. We need to help this family. We need to go back a second time. And we did remember when we were there, there was a young kid and the mom did say that she was having a baby the following week. But she was not quite able to do anything for him. She has no light, she has no water. And let me tell you something, the view up there, I'm not sure if you guys have that picture, the view up there is so spectacular. You know? So that was one reason why we wanted to head back. But of course, the main focal point was to go back to, to do something else to the family. So given that that child had a birthday coming up, we decided, you know what, let's all again see what we can do. One person did ice cream, one person did cake, one person did an ice cream cone, and one person did party bags. One member of the team, she um, does the time planning, so she did all of these things. And we went back up a week after. And I don't think we had notified them that we were coming back up. But we remember that that person was that day, the young kid. I think he was about, probably about five years old. And we went to the home. No one was there. No one was at home. So we called her. We said, hey, um, we came to just something else off for you. Um, she said, you know what? I'm walking up the hill. And trust me, it's a very steep hill. She said about we drove up there. It took us about seven to ten minutes. So it, it would have been about double that time in walking. She's like, you know what? I'm on our way. We are on our way up the hill. Wait for us there. And we, we took our time. We decorated, I think it was a, a, a dried up plum tree. We put all of the happy birthday signs, the balloons, we set up the party bags, the cake, the ice cream. The ice cream was melting, there was no fridge, but we did it the best that we could. And when that kid came walking down that truck, walking downhill, he was so, like his heart just melted and we all pushed at us here and we were all happy. Just so now we could do so much more for that family. And these are the and kind of conversations that we kind of work towards and really are happy yeah. to have. But reminding That's individuals of the numbers 7217783 and 3552505, Jalen Lynch, PRO of COVID Care. Hopefully the name of the NGO long outlasts the pandemic. But we want to thank you for joining us. And on behalf of the entire news team, thank you for joining us. Have a good night.